Welcome back to Quarantine Circular. In the last episode, we played through the diagnosis sequence, where basically the Admiral was deciding what to do about Gabriel. Accept their help, don't accept their help, assemble a, a team to execute the plan, which turns out the plan that we decided on was accept their help. But everybody's, of course, pretty scared of Gabriel, since Gabriel just uh, put Professor Zima in a coma accidentally, while attempting to attack the security officer. So, let's begin the final sequence. Treatment. The Order. That's them. Two ships. Standard for a planet this size. They will land in the next ten minutes. Perhaps an hour to get here. We're out of time. How dare you come back out here, Tang? So that's what those are, the order's coming. I didn't think they'd come so soon. Oh, but the phage progress looks to be finished, so it seems like they've made it. Okay, well as long as we get the phage from them, then we can enact the, the cure, right? I think that's all we need. God, I hate Tang. Why the fuck is Tang here? If you remember in the last episode when I was assembling my team, I had no choice in the matter. I had to take Tang with me. Mistakes were made. Yes. By both of us. Where's Professor Zima? Nobody has told me what happened to her. Oh shit, I can lie and say she's dead. Yeah, she's not dead, but she's in a medically induced coma. Which ain't good. She's in a critical but stable condition. Stable? Good. That swing was meant for you. You alone. I should be talking to Professor Zima right now. It was not meant to be this way. You disgust me, Tang. You disgust me as well, Tang. I'm sure we can find a path out of this. You were too blind to see. Mark understood. Before he even knew who I was, he saw the need for trust and collaboration. He saw past your tribalism. Well, I'm gonna try to temper Tang's anger as much as possible. So, maybe you're right. Maybe I should find a path to trusting you. At this point, I'm unsure the situation is salvageable. I should never have let you get under my skin in that way. But, enough. I want to talk about Professor Zima. I want to talk about the work we did. The Taylor Phage. She seemed proud of it. And rightly so. In one night, we came closer to a cure than humanity has in the years this plague has raged. We became friends. She said so. We talked of the universe. We played word games and rapped. <laughs> I learned about the best of humanity last night, but now she lies broken because of my rage and your manipulation of events. God, I hate Tang. I don't want to say any of these things. Uh, ah. <sighs> Blaming me for your mistakes will not help you, alien. There is truth to that. I should never have come here. Humanity is not ready to accept our help. Perhaps the Order are correct. Remember, the Admiral's orders are to get their help. Humanity is prepared to fight for its survival. Oh, I've seen that. What did you even come out here for, Tang? What did your Admiral want from me? He wanted to accept your help. I see. 
I wish humanity had proven worthy of that help. Maybe if Professor Zima were still here. Just talk. All of it. Every promise. I promised nothing except an opportunity. You showed me that humanity may not be ready for that opportunity. You are responsible. You know, the Admiral said something to me last night that has stayed with me. He said that quarantines should not be broken until every outcome was known. I think there was wisdom to that. I made the mistake of blundering onto this planet without knowing the consequences. I will leave. Let your species die. It is what you want, Tang. The freedom to make your own fate. You will leave your cure with us. Let us decide how to use it. I am done interfering. My cure leaves with me. It only exists thanks to your restraint being deactivated. It would have likely fried if everything had gone to your little plan. Your people are not worthy of survival. I agree. We are unworthy. You have been an appalling ambassador. You stand there with your threats and bluster and you still think this is a fight you can win. That the same methodology of taunts is the way to do so. I do not think you are half the villain you pretend to be. Now release me before the order arrive. How about a trade? Your freedom for the cure. Maybe. Our only problem is that I do not trust you to make good on your part of the deal. I don't trust your Admiral or Lisa, not after everything that has happened. I've even lost faith in Mark. What? Why? Why Mark? With Professor Zima unable to join us, I have no shred of interest. Gabriel, why Mark? You need me to convince you, I'll let you go. Yes. Go on. Hmm. Self-interest. As much as it pains me, your cure, your cure will save our people. It's what many want. You will not betray me, because it serves no purpose and applies potential harm. A strong argument. I will provide you with a cure. The phage is self-replicating. I will return to the old city before the order arrive, spread it among your people before I go. I will also use this translation tool to upload the genome and maintenance information to your system. Mark and his team should be able to provide support. So the decision is yours. Free me or stun me and wait for the order. My fate is in your hands. Only option is to reach for wrist computer. It is just us now, Tang. This is your final decision. What kind of human do you want to be? Unlock the restraint. Thank you, Tang. The cure, Gabriel. Of course. I will upload the genome and schematics to your servers now. There. That is everything you need. It is time for me to leave. Good luck. Goodbye, Tang. Safe travels.
One must understand that angels and demons do not exist. We all claw in the shadows for survival. Gabriel was no different. In the moment of capture, the creature did what all prisoners eventually do. A deal. The cure for freedom. I let the terrorist run off back to the stars and kept the cure in hand. Myself and the Admiral worked out a system for rollout. It is truly a shame that the Professor did not live to see the profound impact of her work. What we do now for humanity, we do for her memory. It is our mission. Tang Lei, co-founder, Bespoke Bio Solutions. This is really interesting. So Tang Lei stopped becoming or stopped being a security officer and ended up co-founding a company that's in charge of the rollout of the cure. So this is at least a bit into the future. I mean, I don't know if it's years or just months, but a while after the events that we saw in the game. So this is sort of like an epilogue for what happened to Tang. And well, it also tells us what happened to Professor Zima. God, it's really sad that they died. That's so shitty. Okay, is there anything else? For Carrie? Hmm. So dedicated to Carrie, so that that password, which was Carrie, I guess that's someone the developers know? Maybe someone who passed away or something like that? Okay. Oh, those are short credits. <laughs> I guess it is a pretty small game. Yeah, so I definitely feel... God, I want to do more playthroughs, right? I want to see all the different twists and turns. Because it definitely has them. Your decisions do actually affect what happens. And it says somewhere that in this game they affect your your outcomes even more than they did in, in Subsurface Circular. And I definitely feel like that. Like, one of the big ones, one of the really, really big ones, is I feel like if initially playing it as Mark, if I didn't unlock the collar, I feel like that would have changed everything. I mean, that would mean... That would mean that Gabriel wouldn't have... I think wouldn't have been able to attack anyone, or at least if they tried, they would have been shocked and would have stopped them very quickly. So they wouldn't have been able to go after... Uh, Tang Lei or Professor Zima. So Professor Zima would still be alive. Also, I feel like if I just outright attacked Gabriel with Tang Lei instead of trying to dodge, then maybe I could have also saved Professor Zima. Yeah, I feel like Zima probably wouldn't have died in that case. Aside from that, well, I mean, at the very, very end there, I had the decision of whether to basically go with the cure or or give uh, Gabriel up to the Order and not get the QR, which obviously would have made a big, big difference. I wonder what that epilogue would have said. There would have been no founding of a company to distribute the QR. So that's three things just obviously that would have been super different if I made different decisions, and I'm sure there's more than that too. Man, I really got a... I'm not happy with this ending at all. In terms of like my decisions, I'm not happy with where my decisions led. I really want to go back and do things differently. Especially Professor Zima. After that, when, when they got put into a coma, that's when everything just went downhill. It was going pretty well before that. I just wish Tang Lei just wasn't in the fucking picture. God, I hate them so much. They make my skin crawl. Every time I interact with them, or God forbid I have to play as them, just ugh. I think I'm not going to do another playthrough, though. Both because, even though it does feel like my options will definitely make a difference, and I'm sure they will, there's still going to be a lot of repeated stuff, undoubtedly, and in, in my personal experience, any time I've gone back to try to play through a game multiple times to really see where different pathways lead, some of the magic of the game tends to disappear, and I start to see where paths diverge, and it feels more mechanical than anything. And it just ends up hurting the experience for me. So just based on my own experience, I'm going to say I probably shouldn't do that. And hey, also it gives you a good excuse to play the game for yourself. Which, you know, streamers slash YouTubers worried about spoilers and all that. Obviously there's a lot of spoilers in this playthrough. But also a lot of other avenues and options that you could choose. So if you'd like to play the game for yourself, as always, there's a link in the description. 
So let's analyze Quarantine Circular. It still follows that same mold where it's almost entirely text focused. There's no moving, there's no movement like around an environment. You don't explore an environment at all, not even in the slightest. It's all entirely about character and character interaction. So the environment is entirely taken out of the equation, which is very unlike adventure games. You know, adventure games, exploring the environment is a huge part of it. Exploring people's apartments and trying to find past codes and secret keys and whatnot. And yeah, environmental exploration is big. In this case, it's entirely character on character interaction. All of your interactions with the characters is done through text, through selecting dialogue options or decision options in some cases. But some changes that it makes to that formula is, um, well, one of the biggest, I think the biggest, is the introduction of playing as multiple characters. You play as how many? You play as Mark, Gabriel, the Admiral. Actually, I think you play as everybody except maybe not as Lisa. I don't know if you play as Lisa. But yeah, practically every character at some point or another, you play as them. And that shifting of the controlled character is completely new. In Subsurface Circular, you only controlled your one character for the entire game, and that's it. And it's interesting. It creates different dynamics controlling multiple characters. Because, like I mentioned during the playthrough, there's... Well, for one, there's a bit of a tension in, in me personally playing it as I was wondering, sh like, do I feel like I should be role-playing what I think this character would say? Or should I just be having each character do what I think is going to help this other character that I like the most? Right, like I want to help out Gabriel, so I want to do the thing when I'm playing as Tang that helps out Gabriel the most, that sort of thing, which might not be the same thing that Tang would actually do as a character. So it's kind of an interesting tension and uh, interesting dynamics as you play as these different characters. That was totally unexpected to me and really interesting, actually, because it's all about character on character interaction. So shifting who you interact with, who you interact from makes a huge difference. Another thing that I think they added only in this game is the bars that appear above people's names to track your, basically your progress towards certain things, whether it's a good sort of progress or a bad sort of progress. For example, like one of them was uh, something like gain Gabriel's trust, I think it was, when you're playing as Mark. So that was a bar that you wanted to fill up. So it's kind of like a... It's sort of, it helps you know where you're at with a character. So it kind of tracks what their general mood towards you is, which is helpful in crafting my responses, but it also helps you more strategically choose what your next option is going to be. You can kind of see what your goal or one of your goals might be. Like if there's a bar for uh, Gabriel's trust in me, then my brain goes to, okay, I should be thinking of what dialogue options are going to make them trust me, you know, because that's what I want to do. I want to, <laughs> I want to make the bar go up, but yeah, it's sort of like a, a bit of a goal, a bit of keeping track of where characters' moods are at. And then there's other ones that you don't want to... There's other ones that are sort of negative bars instead of positive, like the one where you're playing as Mark and you have a bar for Tang's patience. The more you test their patience, the lower the bar goes. So that's one where you want to keep it as high as possible and it starts all the way at the top and goes down rather than starting at the bottom and going up. So a little bit of a change there, but same basic idea, keeping track of how a character perceives you and always made me keep in mind, okay, I should probably be trying to not annoy Tang. Another thing which I'm pretty sure is new is the whole note system, where you can view the notes for each character and it tells you basically their own personal thoughts, not a transcript of everything that you just said, but like their own diary that they're writing kind of in the moment. And that's, I mean, that's the sort of thing I normally like and I don't dislike it but I just didn't really feel the need to read it even though it is original stuff it's not just a transcript of what already happened so I don't think it's just to like remind people of what happened if they happen to have forgotten although that's probably part of the function there is some some new stuff in there but I, I never really felt the need to read it I don't really know why but yeah that's just kind of it's there it's kind of neat uh, when you go into the notes you see a really pretty full like mostly full body portraits of the characters, which is nice, but uh, that new feature didn't really matter much to me personally. So overall, I really, really enjoyed Quarantine Circular, even more than I enjoyed Subsurface Circular. 
I hope they make more games in the in the circular series. I hope you enjoyed watching and thanks for coming along with me.